So the mood of the gopis, Hare Krishna, can you have your attention please? So till now we have discussed in the Gopi Gita how the gopis are beseeching Krishna, please come back. And first they talk about how Krishna is uncharacteristic of you to abandon us and go away like that. And then they consider, if even if it's, we are unworthy because of which you are abandoning us, you can make us worthy. It is your return will make us worthy. And now, and from here onward, they go deeper into more personal attributes of Krishna, and especially the personal dealings they have had personally with Krishna. So, let's begin with the eighth text. You see, you see that and then we can discuss it. Eight, yeah. as they are thinking about Krishna, they are remembering more and more his personal dealings with them. It's like if a camera sees something and then zooms in, zooms in, comes more closer and closer. So it's like that, the gopis, they are thinking about Krishna and they are thinking more and more about his dealings with them and his pastime specifically in Vrindavan. Till now if you see it was Krishna's position that was being talked about and then it was their their own position but now from here onward they will focus on their interaction with Krishna so here they are saying Krishna Madhuraya Gira Valguvakyaya that you speak your, your voice is very sweet and your words are also very charming so voice and words are too related but they are still distinct. Sometimes some people can have a very sweet voice and they can speak the most foul words with a sweet voice. <laughs> so, or some people may be speaking very sweetly but they have like a grating kind of voice. Then it's not a pleasant experience hearing them. But Krishna, your voice is sweet and your words are also very are charming. Madhuraya Gira Valguvakya and he says, how charming that it's easy to it's easy to captivate people who are not very intelligent. And then there's the English word also sweet talking. <coughs> yes, we see sweet talk someone and then we fool them. But wise people they don't get sweet talked. But Krishna, your talking is so sweet that Buddha Manogya. Even the wise become charmed. But the indication over here is that your words are not just superficial meant to attract. They are actually they are filled with a deep, profound meaning. And thus, they attract Buddha Mano Gaya. And they are saying also, if Krishna not only are use your voice and words sweet and captivating, you are also beautiful lotus eyed with Pushkare Kshana. And now when we when we when someone is very dear to us at that time they if they have gone far away from us then we long to hear just their voice once 
Now, if nowadays, of course, with the internet, we can hear the voice of people from different parts of the world also. But still, the voice itself brings a certain level of familiarity, comfort, connection. The gopis are praying, Krishna, you come back and speak the sweet words. Vidhi kari riva veer muhiyatir. Veer, oh, here, you can switch this off, I think. Veer, that, oh, oh, hero, now the heroic activity that you have to do here, you don't have any to fight any demons again, kill them, but just come and vitar veeranas. Just as the heroes, the kshatriyas, one aspect is that they protect from hurt. Another aspect is that they give charity. So here, Krishna, you come and give charity. What is the charity? Just come and let us hear your voice. Speak your words. Speak words from your beautiful, with your beautiful voice and that will revive us. Vidhikari riva veera muhiyatir adharasi duna pyayasvana we long to drink the nectar from your lotus lips. We want to hear your voice. And we want to relish whatever it is that you may speak. So, so the vision of God as not just a, not just a power or even not God as a remote person that is completely removed for the gopis because he's a living, loving, real person whose voice they hear. And for all of us, now we, when we chant the holy names, it is actually the sound of Krishna coming to us. When we hear about Krishna through the devotees of Krishna, that's also, it's Krishna reaching out to us. Now this verse is the background to the next verse, that which will, which is one of the most celebrated verses in the Gopi Gita, which we often recite and Prabhupada also talk about it. That Krishna Katha is not just that which is spoken by Krishna, it's also spoken about Krishna. So, we'll come to that verse, but here the mood is that Krishna, please come back and revive us by speaking words of wisdom with your, in your charming voice. We'll decide this once again, we we'll go to the next verse. <laughs> So this verse is very celebrated in our tradition. We have when the Chaitanya Charitamrit, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is mercy is being sought by Rama by Pratap Rudra. At that time he dresses like ordinary citizen 
and then he starts singing the Gopi Gita when Lord Chaitanya is resting after dancing in front of Lord Jagannath in Rathyatra. And at that time, when he comes to this verse, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gets up and embraces him. He says, Bhurida, Bhurida. He says, You are the giver. You are the giver of great charity. You are a great benefactor. You have reminded me of Krishna. So, he, this verse, it, that is, it is in context and sometimes certain verses are so significant that their significance transcends their context also. So, when Srila Prabhupada would quote this verse, he would quote it to talk primarily about how the saintly people, they travel and they speak about Krishna. And by speaking about Krishna, they do great good to everyone. And that is the word that in that context, that speaking about Krishna is very auspicious. Uh, that in, Generally, we use it in that context. Let's look at it in that, that context and then we look in the context of the Gopi Gita. So, what are the Gopis saying over here? Tava Katha Amritam. That your Katha is like Amrita, is like nectar. And Tapta Jeevanam. So, there are different kinds of poison. One of my friend, friends recently did an elaborate study on poison. He had some project he was working on. So, there are different kinds of poisons which kill in different ways. So, some poisons, they create an immense burning sensation. Some poisons, they actually first make a person unconscious and then the death is almost like painless. Often the poisons include some kind of uh, soporific kind, some something which puts them to sleep, so that it's it appears like a painless poisoning. <laughs> but the American government usually uses if they want to execute some people in capital punishment. Now that's the kind of the injections they use for that purpose. So <clears throat> the but here they're saying that tava katham ritam tam. The jivanam. So nectar, this nectar, what is it going to do? We are afflicted, our lives are afflicted by material existence, by various material desires, which just torment us. It's desire and fear are two sides of the same coin. The more we have desires, the more we will have fears. Chintam aparimeyam cha pralayantam upashitaha kamopa bhoga parama etavari nishitaha. Krishna says in the 16th chapter, 11th and 12th text, that, that uh, for those who are, who are driven, who are dominated by many, many desires, they also become dominated by fears. Their desires stay till death and their fears also stay till death. In fact, they increase their death comes closer and closer. So we are all burning because of this desire and fear. So, when somebody has taken a poison or somebody has been given poison and then there is an antidote. And that antidote can okay, counter the effect of the poison. So, they are saying, Gopi are saying that your katha is like the antidote. Tapta Now, how does it act as an antidote? That they are describing in the next verse. Next part. Shravana Mangalam Shrimadatatam So, what is Shravana Mangala? By hearing it, hearing the Krishna Katha, auspiciousness comes up. How does the auspiciousness come up? Because Shri Madhatatam, they are filled with tremendous auspicious power. Shri Madhatatam, they are permeated with. So like some foods are like, uh, they say superfoods, they are nutrient packed foods. Just take uh, maybe one, one handful and you can get energy for a whole day. That's kind of foods that are often advertised. But Krishna Katha is like full of packed with spiritual nutrients. And what does it do? It counters the effect of the poison of material existence by giving us higher satisfaction. Basically, material desires afflict us by dissatisfaction. Oh, this is not right, that is not right, that is not right, that is wrong in your life, that is wrong in your life. So, you set it right. How do I set it right? So, but when we hear about Krishna, just that if you just hear about Krishna, not with the purpose of getting something from Krishna, but just getting a connection with Krishna, 
Can he absorb you, Krishna? Then our mind starts becoming peaceful. And thus, the burning fire of material existence starts getting pacified. And so, everybody is burning in this world. And if suppose somebody is being poisoned and somebody comes and gives them an antidote. So, you saved my life. Oh, you are so kind, you are so merciful, you are so charitable. So similarly, the, here it is said that those who give the nectar of Krishna Katha, Bhuvi Grinanti Je Bhuri Dajanaha, those who travel the earth uh, giving the nectar of Krishna Katha, Bhuri Da, they are the doers of great good. So those who people who are sick and somebody gives free medicine, that is good. Somebody is uh, hungry and somebody gives free food, that is good. Ultimately, all these reliefs are temporary. But if we get Krishna, then that is the supreme relief. So this is a verse that transcends its context. And this verse very beautifully reflects the theme of the Srimad Bhagavatam. The theme of the Srimad Bhagavatam is hear about Krishna and get relief from the fire of material existence. Just as Parikshit Maharaj got when Shukadev Goswami spoke to him. So that is the uh, that is the universality of this verse, and it's amazing that in the Gopi Gita, which is the highest, uh, which is the expression of the highest emotion of the highest devotees for the highest manifestation of the Lord, there there is a verse of such universal significance, and they, they, it reflects how the Bhagavatam is consistent in its its purpose. Although very diverse subjects are addressed, the purpose is very consistent. It's an integrated text. Now, in the specific context, the Acharyas talk about different things over here. And it's said over here that uh, the gopis themselves, the previous chapter describes how when Krishna was Krishna disappeared, the gopis went mad. The gopis went mad and they started they desperately searching for Krishna, couldn't find it and they couldn't bear the separation. So while they were searching for Krishna, they started enacting the pastimes of Krishna. One gopi jumped on another gopi and he says, Kaliya, I will crush you. Uh, and another gopi, she started saying, Oh, leave me, leave me, child. And another gopi caught her. Uh, they are enacting the Putana Bhava. The various pastimes they were enacting like this. And the idea is, that the gopis were somehow trying to remember Krishna. And they were remembering Krishna by enacting his pastimes. They were remembering Krishna by, uh, by reciting his pastimes. So the previous verses, they are remembering Krishna and they are reminding each other of Krishna. So it's like one gopi speaks and the other gopis remember. And then the other gopi speaks and the, uh, all the other gopis remember. So the gopis are doing at this uh, what is said in Chattashtoki Bhagavad Gita Machitta Madgata Prana Bodhayanta Parasparam Kathayanta Shyamam Nityam Tushyanti Charamanticha The gopis are relishing Krishna in their each other's association. So now, uh, can any, uh, anybody speak about Krishna and people experience relief? Well, yes and no. Speaking, the subject about Krishna is always potent because it is about Krishna. But at the same time, the Bhagavatam says that bhakti can be performed in goodness, passion, and ignorance. Sattva, and Tamas. So what happens when, if, even if somebody is speaking about Krishna, if their consciousness is not very pure, then the potency of Krishna doesn't manifest through them. It manifests, but not fully. It's, to, it's like when we are in the mode of ignorance, our consciousness is like a, we could say, an insulator or resistor. Krishna doesn't pass through the consciousness. When our consciousness is in the mode of passion, it's like a semi semiconductor. So slightly it passes. But when it's goodness and rises to a pure goodness, then it becomes more and more of a conductor. When we are completely purified, it's like a 100% conductor. So then, that's why the more pure, the more advanced a devotee is, if we hear from them, then Krishna gets infused more and more into our hearts. So Krishna's potency doesn't depend on the speaker's potency. But the manifestation of that potency in this world 
depends on the consciousness of the speaker. Of course, if a person is very receptive, if some soul is sincerely seeking, then even if the speaker is in the mode of ignorance, speaker doesn't know, still that person can receive. Because if somebody is sincere, Krishna can use even the unworthiest of instruments. But in normal situations, the, the more receptive the speaker and the more, more, more you could say, transmittive, transmitting the more receptive the audience and the more receptive, the more transmitting the speaker is, then Krishna's magic manifests over there. So here the gopis are praying that these people, this Bhurida Jana, those who do such good to the world, how do they good, do such good? Because it is you who, you who empower them. It is you who manifest through them. It is you who inspire them to do such good. So if your devotees are such benefactors, then O oh Krishna, how can you not be a benefactor? If your devotees go and they travel all over the world to deliver from distress souls whom they even don't know, then you know us and how can you be not our benefactor? How can you not come back? Krishna, please come back. You who are you who are the source of the potency of Krishna Katha, you who do good to the world through through that your devotee speaking Krishna Katha, how are you doing bad to us, Krishna? Please come back. Recite this answer. Gopis continue the description of their personal relationship with Krishna and based on that they are making this call Krishna please come back so now somebody might say that Krishna that Krishna Katha can pacify the heart even when Krishna is not there so Krishna might say that Krishna you just discuss Krishna Katha and you pacified why do I need to come back why do I need to come back so Gopis are saying over here yes that the kind of pastimes you have performed with us, they are dhyana mangalam. So the same word mangala which came in the shravana mangalam, dhyana mangalam. So speaking about them is auspicious, remembering them is also auspicious. But Krishna, for us, remembering your pastimes is not auspicious. What do you mean it's not auspicious? This is because we have had personal dealings with you. When we think about you, how sweetly you dealt with us, that 
Prahasitam Priya. That Prahasitam, you had such a gentle smile when you would see us. And that smile would just warm our hearts, would, would delight us. When Krishna came, when Krishna played the flute and the gopis came, at that time, each gopi felt Krishna was welcoming her with a gentle smile on his face. Mandaha samuditan anambujam. Krishna has a gentle smile and muditan anambujam. It's a very beautiful, joy-increasing joy lotus face that he has. So when we, we think about, when we think about your pastimes, we remember your personal, your personality, your personal dealings with us. Prahasitam and then Priya Prema Vikshanam, your dear smile, your love filled glances. So Krishna, even when the when he every day when he would come back from Vinda from the forest to Vindavan, the Anandavan Chap would describe that all the gopis would be in their homes on the terraces. And Krishna would be walking along, but Krishna would with a sidelong glance look at each gopi. The gopis would behold Krishna and Krishna would, they would offer their love to Krishna with their glances and Krishna would return the love with his glance. And the same thing happened much more when Krishna performed pastimes with the gopis in the Ras Pila in the forest. So the gopis are saying just now, it is not a long time ago, that very night, just some time ago Krishna was there with them. Krishna welcomed them with his glance, Krishna welcomed them with his smile. Prahasitam Priya Prema Vikshanam. And not only that, Viharanam Jate. That not only did we that he glance at us and smile at us, but we, we perform very sweet pastimes with us. Viharanam. We did Leela with you. And Rahasi Samvido Yarudi Sprishaha. And he also spoke words in, in a private place which touched our hearts. Krishna speaks his words of love for uh, the gopis and in different situations see love works in mysterious ways sometimes you know, if we appreciate someone in public then it like sometimes some people may feel that you're just doing it for show to tell show the world how you appreciate someone or somebody else might feel that when you appreciate somebody in public oh you know you, you value this person so much that you are ready to Talk about the glories of that person in public. So, how in relationships what will work? Uh, somebody, some people say that you always praise me in public and then chastise me in private. So you are just putting on a show that you are you look very good in the world's eye, but then you are very harsh with me. Now it could be like that. It could also be that in in public, if somebody appreciates, then they have a, already a good relationship, and then they talk appreciate someone in public, then that that. The world also comes to know about the good relationship. So, in general, if there is no one else to see, and at that time, somebody speaks some words of affection, then, uh, then that is not meant as a show for anyone else. That is just meant for that person. Like Srila Prabhupada's Markine Bhagavad Dharma, the song which Prabhupada wrote his books and he is specifically the world in mind when he wrote these books. But his song, Borogrupa Koile Krishna, that song was spoken just for Krishna. Prabhupada was speaking directly to Krishna. And Prabhupada didn't even know at that time whether he whether his mission would be successful, whether anyone would actually read that song. And Prabhupada did not publish that song. Devotees accidentally discovered that song later, many years later. So, the gopis are saying, Krishna, you pers in our personal one-to-one -one interactions, you spoke such sweet words of affection to us. And those words, they touched our heart. Rahasi samvido. So, Rahasi is confidential. In private, with nobody to hear. It was not for anyone, but just for our ears. When you spoke those words, they touched our hearts. Ya Rudi Sprashaha. Kohakono manaha. Kshobhayantihi. But now, O oh Lord, O oh cheater, kuhakono manaha. Kshob. As we remember this, our mind is getting agitated. Kshobhayantihi. Now, why is this? Normally, 
for us when we hear about krishna when we remember krishna's past time our mind becomes pacified but the gopis are saying when we remember you remember your past times our mind gets agitated why is that because the gopis are thinking that krishna who was so loving he's not with us anymore see for us there is no krishna we have at present at least most of us we don't have any experience of krishna and from no experience of krishna to experience of krishna through sound is a big step higher but for those who have personal experience of krishna then when even they experience krishna through sound the gopis are thinking all that we are remembering is oh you are not with us now so hearing about you does good to everyone but hearing about you does no good to us that it agitates us and therefore krishna hearing about you is no substitute for you please come back in fact the uh, in the past time the uh, described in our acharya's works that at, at one time the gopis uh, they when krishna has gone away from vrindavan to mathura and then to dwarka and he, there is no sign of his coming back the gopis one time decide that actually if krishna can become detached from us then we can also become detached from krishna if krishna can forget us then we can also forget him and what do you think you know actually but attachment is very difficult to give up uh, we want to give become detached from krishna but we just can't and then they think how oh, we have heard that actually great sages perform yoga to become detached so the gopis sit in yoga yoga yogic asanas and they start performing meditation so that they can forget krishna jhana avasthita tadgate na manasa pashyantiyam yogino for the yogi is the purpose and perfection of their meditation is to focus on krishna uh, but the gopis are meditating so that they can forget krishna but then the gopis are sitting and meditating to forget krishna and as they are sitting and meditating suddenly you know the one of the go, one gopi remembers krishna so much he starts speaking about krishna as he starts speaking about krishna and then all the other gopis oh you know krishna did this yeah but krishna did that at that time and then krishna did that at that time and they keep talking and then after some time hey we are supposed to forget krishna <laughs> and again they sit down in meditation so in this way the gopis are such a exalted level that they try to forget krishna and practice yoga for that purpose so the, here the gopis are saying that krishna just although remembering your past times can do good to the whole world no because you have already given you have such intimate experience of you that hearing about you will not relieve us remembering your past times will not relieve us we need you with us therefore please come back yes.
gopis are meditating that krishna has left us and gone away into the forest so while he has gone to the forest what's happening at chalasiyad vrajaj when you go into the forest for what purpose charayan vashun for grazing the cows that we contemplate on how your lotus feet and here they are contemplating that nalina sundaram your lotus feet are as beautiful as a lotus your feet are like a lotus are as beautiful as soft as tender as a lotus and shila trunangurai and then they think that okay now you are in the forest you are walking you have gone in the dark forest the gopis and themselves came out of the dark forest you have gone deep into the dark forest so you may not be able to see where your foot is stepping and then the pebbles the twigs the stone the thorns they may pierce your feet and thinking that your feet will be pierced by those feet by those stones and pebbles that is ripping our heart apart Or that kalilatam mana can't get you. The kalilatam, we are extremely agitated by that. So when we when we deeply care for someone, when we love for someone, then even their smallest pain becomes like a big pain for us. When a mother loves a child, then at that time the child cries even a little bit. The mother gets worried. Why is the child crying? She doesn't want the child to cry. So love means that. we don't want even the slightest pain to come upon our beloved or object of love the gopis are thinking krishna you are in the forest and your feet are being pierced by these thorns we can't bear it now the gopis have just a few verses earlier said four verses earlier fani fana arpitam that you offered these feet to kaliya that means you danced on kaliya now kaliya with his poisonous fangs is far far more dangerous than the thorns of the forest the thorns that pierce and hurt slightly the fangs were so poisonous so so venomous that one bite could not just hurt but kill and krishna has survived that not only survived that krishna flaw effortlessly uh, subdued kaliya So I ask them, what is the danger? If Krishna was not hurt by Kaliya, is he going to be hurt by some thorns? But that is not the mood of love. The mood of love is not how how self-sufficient our object of love is, but rather how deficient our service is. A devotee doesn't think, oh Krishna, he has. He has all the food in the world. Why should I offer him food? No, you think that if I don't offer food, you know, I am deficient in my service. So similarly, the gopis, out of their love for Krishna, they are saying, Krishna, if you go, you are in the forest and your your feet are being pierced and we can't bear it. So the mood is here that Krishna, please come back. Don't let your feet be pierced. Don't let our heart be ripped apart. Please, please, O oh Krishna. come back yes
Swamis in this verse are continuing their call, Krishna, please come back. And here they're saying, Krishna, when you go out during the day and then you come back. Now, Krishna might say that, you know, why are you so afflicted by separation from me? You're frequently separated from me. Is it that you're always with me? No. Say that, why is my separation from me afflicting you so much? This gopis are saying that actually we are always afflicted by separation from you. Uh, that, and they are saying that every evening when you come back, dina parikshaye, uh, normally when somebody comes back, and you know, normally when we wake up, then we bathe, then we dress, and then we may decorate ourselves. And at that time, person looks fresh and attractive. But normally at the end of a day, after a long hard day's work, you know, if somebody says, let's have a photo show now, photo op now. <laughs> no, 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 I don't look good now. There, nobody looks attractive at the end of a long, tiring day of work. But Krishna's beauty is so transcendental that even at the end of the day when he returns, Dina Parikshaye They say that, that actually your hair the Krishna, everything about him is so divine and so transcendental that even if, say, the wind has blown and Krishna's hair is a little, little disheveled, but even that disheveled hair looks attractive. When Vrindava and Krishna goes to the forest, at that time, grazing cows is actually a dusty affair. Dusty in the sense that the cows their hooves, when they fall on the ground, dust rises. And that dust settles uh, everywhere. It settles on the face of Krishna also. Now normally, if dust has settled on somebody's face, you know, we'll say, oh, remove that dust. But here the, go, the dust of Vrindavan is such that when it settles on Krishna's face, Krishna looks even more attractive. So the dust of Vrindavan is a more attractive is more attractive than the best cosmetic powder that somebody might put to adorn themselves. So they say, Krishna, when we see you in this way, actually you look so attractive that it seems as if when you are coming back, you're not just returning, but you are placing Cupid in our hearts. That means you are increasing our longing for you. Just the sight of you makes us long for you more and more and more. And this is this. But now, at least, you know, we had the hope. So, if separation is already always afflicting you, then you may, Krishna might say that, okay. Then it's always afflicting you and you're used to it. He said, no. It's, 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 separation always afflicts us. But now, we came here with the hope of union, with the hope that our separation will end. And at that time, if there is separation, it's unbearable. Say, so suppose, you know, maybe, maybe it's a festival and we fast, Pandam Nirjal Ekadash, we fast Nirjal. And then we somehow survived the fast. Whole day we were hungry, whole night we were hungry. But, say maybe 7.30, you know, 7.30 morning is the fast breaking time. Quite often, that morning, every mantra of the japa seems very long. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's 7.30 and you come with the expectation of food. And then somebody tells you, actually the calculation was wrong, the fast breaking is 11.30. <laughs> what? <laughs> so, we have to already for 24 hours. But then that 4 hours, or even it's 1 hour, it's 8.30. When the expectation of relief is there and then the relief doesn't come, it becomes even more agonizing. So they say, Krishna, we are always afflicted by separation from you, but now we had the hope of relief from that affliction, but again we have become afflicted. This is unbearable, Krishna. Please come back. Please come back. We are remembering how beautiful you are and how attractive you are and we want to behold you. Please come back.
this verse is again a meditation on the lotus feet of Krishna. This is a more personal and intense meditation. Earlier also they said that Krishna, please come and bless us with your lotus feet. Now also they are saying, earlier they said that there is a progression in intimacy. Said now they are focusing more on the personal relationship with Krishna. So earlier that when they said pranata dehi nam papa karshanam, the mood there was that if we have any impurity within us, your lotus feet can remove that impurity within us. But now they are saying Krishna, your lotus feet are not only the remover of undesirables, your lotus feet are also the bestower of desirables. Pranata kamadam that they fulfill the desire that anyone that that people may have kamadam they give the, they give the desire those who bow down to them pranata kamadam and they can fulfill the desires of even the greatest of beings padma jarchitam that even the devtas and the one of the greatest among the devtas is brahma people on the earth pray to the devtas for fulfilling their boons but when the devtas who need some boons they come to you they worship your lotus feet which is the glory of your lotus feet. And anybody who is blessed with those lotus feet, they forever cherish those feet. So saying that when you place your lotus feet on the earth, then it becomes like a monument. Dharani Mandanam. And Vrindavan, uh, although there are so many cows, so many cowherd boys, uh, who all go with Krishna, but when Krishna walks, it's the... Vrajabhumi arranges in a mysterious way so that nobody steps on Krishna's foot, Krishna's footprints. And wherever Krishna goes, his footprints are preserved. So yoga maya, just like uh, you know, if in a, in a particular place, uh, there are some old buildings, then the government may decide these are archaeological monuments and nobody can make any changes to them. So similarly, yoga maya, Decide that wherever Krishna's footprints are there, that is like an archaeological monument. And nobody touches them. So, everyone cherishes those lotus feet. Anybody who gets them, they cherish them. The earth cherishes these lotus feet. And these lotus feet are especially a worthy object for meditation when somebody is apadi, when somebody is going through distress. And what do they do? That Charana pankajam shamtamam chate. Shama is peace, satisfaction. Tamam is the best, like good, better, best, the highest superlative. So they are the giver of the greatest satisfaction. And therefore, oh Krishna, now they are saying, we are in the affliction of separation from you. Your lotus feet are the remover of all affliction and they are the bestower of the greatest benediction. So we seek the benediction, Krishna, you come back and you place your lotus feet on our, on our hearts and you bless us. So Krishna, please come back.
gopis are now praying krishna please come back and they are talking about their personal dealings with krishna and they are remembering how krishna uh, in their personal intimate dealings he expresses affection for them by hugging them by kissing them and he is saying uh, the gopis are saying surat vardhanam shokanashanam that when krishna you you offer your affection to us that increases our love for you surat vardhanam and whatever grief is there that grief goes away so shokanashanam and not only that now that there can be there can be distress because of different things one is the distress something desirable we are not getting it but sometimes distress comes because we are desiring something which is not really desirable so when we get krishna not only that krishna satisfy us but krishna removes all unworthy desires from our heart itar rag vismaranam runa and when we get get a taste for krishna bhakti this for remembering krishna then what then all our other desires which distract us from him go away the same thing come the end of the bhagavatam also that yad rasamrut truptasya nanyatra syadvati kwachet that yad rasamrut truptasya once we get the taste of krishna then one will no other taste will appeal to anyone so here they are saying here that now these lotus lips these you offer even to the flute flute swarita venuna shushtu chumbitam that you may say that oh you know we are proud or we are unworthy but actually you give them to a flute so if you are giving those lotus lips to your flute to a flute why can't you give it to us please o oh krishna vitara veeranas you are a hero you cannot you cannot leave others who are suffering in fact a hero comes to those who are suffering and relieves their suffering how can you leave and cause suffering to someone krishna please come and restore our life to us restore our joy to us please bestow the nectar of your lips to us <laughs> is a praying that krishna actually separation from you even for one moment is unbearable they say that atati yad bhavan ahanikan naam that when you bhavan here they are using referring to krishna 
in a respectful second person says not twam but bhavan not tu but aap so like that atatiyat bhavan ahanikan naam and every day at the start when you depart you go out in the forest to graze the cows at that time one moment of separation is truti yugayate it feels like it's unbearable it's like a millennia for us twam apashyatam when we are not able to see you it's not bearable for us and then krishna may say but when you come back when i come back you can see me I say no even at that time also what happens kutila kuntalam shri mukham jate that you 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 are very beautiful face with the locks of hair around it when we want to see that what happens we are obstructed <coughs> jada udikshatam pakshma krutrasham these eyelids which are made by brahma in such a foolish way that they blink and we can't see we can't see you krishna and at that time we feel we feel jada udikshatam we feel this creator is so foolish Brahma is foolish. That so the Gopis are saying that that we are never able to relish you, Krishna. So now at least when you are there, we could see you for some time. But separation from you is a constant affliction. If even if even one moment of separation from you, we can't bear. Then now you are gone. We don't know when you are going to come back. How can we bear that? How can we bear that? So this jada udikshatam is that sometimes, uh, some sometimes some people they criticize someone with the intention of criticizing that person. It is like it is directed intentional criticism, and sometimes it's like a passing criticism. Passing criticism means. that you're speaking one thing but while speaking that time you just you just uh, hit out at something else so the gopis have no intention of disrespecting brahma over here because if you see the previous verse itself they said padmajarchitam that krishna your lotus feet are worshiped by brahma ji but here when that when the desire for krishna is so great that any obstacle is is something which is unbearable and as even in the practice of bhakti sometimes some devotees uh, when they, they have an intense desire to serve krishna in a particular way and at that time the uh, some what they need for that service doesn't work out the devotees may get angry and devotees may criticize and yell and something like that may happen somebody is maybe making making chappan bhoga for govardhan and then somebody loses something And then something important, maybe sugar is not there. This is not there. That at that time, devotee may get angry. You know, how irresponsible! How foolish! Now, why don't you take care of these things? Now, those are if that may seem like anger. And we say, can't you control yourself? Actually, there is there is self control, and there is the purpose of self control. For us, self control is not the ultimate purpose. we want self control so that we can offer the self to the supreme self and if something obstructs us in the offering of the self to the supreme self that anger is very different from the anger that comes because somebody lacks self control maybe somebody wants to enjoy something worldly objects and then they don't get it and then they get angry and they yell so this criticism is actually to be seen as a expression of the love of the gopis for krishna in fact uh, paraphrasing this in the anandavan jampo kavikarnapur says that we feel that for one moment when we are not able to see you it is like the thunderbolt that destroys the whole world it's that unbearable for us oh krishna therefore if one moment is unbearable for us how can we live i'm not knowing when you will come back for how long you will be away please come back
talking about how krishna uh, we are beseeching krishna come back so here they say that krishna now to with the hope of be united with you we have come and you have abandoned us so they telling you know we gave up everything for you and when the gopis heard krishna's flute and they started running out their family members stopped them and the gopis somehow escaped all our family members are forbidding us and we left and we came to you so here in vrindavan the setting is done in such a way that everything is arranged for the enhancement of the pastimes of radha and krishna of the gopis with krishna then why would anyone oppose when krishna is calling the when krishna is calling the gopis actually it is quite often opposition that creates excitement it is opposition that creates excitement say if a if a say sports match is going on between two teams and one team is the world champion and one team is or if there is a boxing match between two people and one person is like a world champion other person is you know is like a thin weakling then nobody will come to watch the match also like when when matches are one sided then the audience turnout is very poor so when there is some opposition when one team wants to win but the other team it's also tough then the match becomes exciting so opposition also creates excitement so in the spiritual world there is the loving dealings with krishna and gopis but there is opposition created so that it becomes more exciting now as i told earlier krishna lila is like a drama in which whatever is required for the enhance for the enhancement of the rasa that is there that is provided that is arranged for so the gopis are arranged to be in parkiras that means the gopis in external vision are married to someone else but actually their heart belongs to krishna their life belongs to krishna in fact everyone belongs to krishna so even the gopis belong to krishna but this setting of opposition apparent opposition of, of uh, is created so that there is more anxiety and when there is more anxiety more tension more excitement then the fulfillment when it happens it's more fulfilling and the union that is there so now of course as it's when i said earlier that the best drama is where even the actors forget that they are acting and they enter into those emotions so similarly when the gopis are coming toward krishna it's not that they are thinking this is all a stage and we are doing a drama the gopis actually are when they are leaving their family and going it's like in that traditional society for a woman to go out at night alone like a path of no return a reputation would be lost and everything would be lost for her so sarva dharman parityajyamam ekam sharanam raja so in general for attaining god it's easy to understand that we have to give up the bad we have to give up sinful sin and sinful activities but there's one trans one translator of the bhagavad gita i was at a gita uh, on the gita jayanti as a gita recitation program and there's some students were reciting verses so they, they recited various verses and they came to this verse and when they were reciting this 1866 they said 
सर्व अधर्मान परित्यज्य मामे कम शरणम रज सदैन आफ्टर दैट आई आस देर यू नो आई आस द ऑर्गेनाइजर्स हे व्हाट इज रॉन्ग इन दिस वर्स अधर्मान या सो देयर मेड सर्व अधर्मान परित्यज्य सो आई आस देम व्हाट इज दिस वर्स सर्व धर्मान परित्यज्य सो नो 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 एक्चुअली दे सेइंग दैट एक्चुअली इट इज That they said, Krishna comes to establish dharma. Dharma samstapana artha ya sambhava mi yugi yugi. So how can Krishna tell people to give up dharma? So actually, over the centuries, when the Bhagavad Gita was written down, there was a a which somebody forgot, and we have put it back now. <laughs> so now, to your idea, they say, how can God tell us to give up dharma? He will tell us to give up a dharma. Now, actually speaking, for Arjuna, the con- Arjuna for Arjuna, there was no fear of Arjuna was a dharmic person already. He was not going to do any dharma. But Arjuna's conflict was which dharma to follow: Shatriya dharma or Kula dharma? As a dynasty member of the Kuru dynasty, should I protect the members of my dynasty, or as a warrior, should I fight against aggressors? So it was dharma sankat. So Krishna tells him, give up all dharma, all the dharmas that stop you from surrendering to me, give it up. So even if dharma stops you from surrendering to me, dharma also needs to be given up. The point I'm making here is that we sometimes have we we certainly have to give up the bad for going to God, but sometimes we have to give up even the good for going to God. And giving up the good for God is a far higher surrender than giving up the bad for God. So the so being dutiful, being responsible, taking care of one's family, this is very good and it's important to do it. and if somebody gives up the good to do bad that's extremely bad if somebody gives up their family responsibility then becomes irresponsible that's terrible but the gopis demonstrate the gopis are not renunciates they're not renun- they're not monks or they're not sanyasis but the gopis exhibit the same renunciation that is exhibited by the greatest renunciates and actually the gopis renunciation is even more because at least for most renunciates if they live in a culture society renunciation gives them some fame but for the gopis their renunciation will bring them infamy oh you left your family and went away and the gopis are saying we did this we have done this krishna we given up everything and why did we do this gati vidas tava you know why we did it we came for you i udgita mohita that your loud flute sound that deluded us now suppose there is a kirtan program and then uh, somebody says oh the kirtan was wonder uh, somebody asks how was the kirtan and they say it was loud well they say is that a praise or is that a compliment or is that a criticism so normally even something like kirtan some kirtans are really loud but normally if somebody uses the word loud to describe kirtan that's a criticism and what to speak of flute Now flute is meant to be sweet. So now gopis are saying, "Tava udgita mohita," the loud sound of your flute deluded us. So now, now only flute. You don't say that flute sound is loud. Flute is a sweet sound. So why are they saying it's loud? It's because the gopis love Krishna so much that when Krishna called them by playing the flute. then the gopis couldn't hear anything else all of the flute was far away and their family members were nearby and their family members were yelling where are you going you can't go like this but the gopis didn't hear any of that all that they heard was krishna is calling so because of that love that sound of the flute deafened them to all other sounds in that sense in their experience it was louder than everything else just like if a mother has a small baby and the mother might be doing some housework in maybe in the kitchen the baby is in the bedroom and there are other family members who are talking maybe there is the geezer that there is the pressure cooker that is blowing there is this sound that sound but if the baby cries the mother becomes deaf to all other sound and immediately goes there so the gopi when they are saying this loud it's not a criticism that your flute was too loud it's 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 expression of their love that the loudness of your flute deafened us to all our family members calls for us call calls to us to stop from going and we just came you called us o krishna so we came we came 
And now what you have done? Kitava Yoshitas Kastyaji Nishi. We came for you and how can you abandon us? Says, even an ordinary human being, if somebody comes to meet them, they will not just go away. If a woman comes to meet a man, then and that too alone, living up, leaving everything and that too at night. Now we are, we are defenseless. How can you abandon us, Krishna? You must come back. Please, please, Krishna. We have given up everything for you. We have nothing except you. Please come back. are now longing for the embrace of Krishna. There's some of the points, as we know that it's different gopis who are speaking. So each gopi is expressing her heart. And some points get repeated in some of in the gopis' expressions. See, Krishna, when you spoke sweetly to us in private, Rahasi Samhita the same phrase, Ruchayodayam, actually, it awakened, it ag agitated us. It triggered great desire in our hearts. As we remember, Prahasitananam Premavikshanam. We remember your gentle smile, your sweet loving glance. And then in Bruhadura Shriya, your broad chest, where there is a mark of Lakshmi Devi Shriya. Vikshadhamate. So Krishna, when you held us tight to your chest, when you hugged, embraced us, so there, that was the fulfillment. It was the fulfillment of our desires, but it was also the activation of more desire. We want more and more of that Krishna. Murati spruha moinyate manaha. Rather remembering your love for us, we can't understand when you showered so much love on us, you lovingly smiled at us, gazed at us, hugged us. Now how can you go away from us? You were so loving, how can you be so heartless? Our heart is filled with desire for you and you have abandoned us. Krishna, please don't do this. Krishna, please come back. <laughs>
the gopis are saying krishna when you appear it is auspicious for everyone prajavanau ka sam for all the residents of vrindavan vyakti rangate vrujin hantriyalam you destroy their distress and not only do you destroy the distress of the vajivasis vishwamangalam you bring auspiciousness to the whole universe the gopis they it is described in the previous chapter and especially in the commentaries in the previous chapter when how the gopis are seeing that all of vrindavan to them appears to be lamenting in separation from krishna uh, generally if we have a particular mood if our heart is heavy then around us also we see sometimes when our heart is heavy we feel the we start feeling the weather is cloudy and the sky is gloomy and everything seems to be depressing now for us it might just be perception but for when vrindavan krishna has disappeared that not only are the gopis afflicted everyone is afflicted and the gopis are saying krishna not just for us but for all of vrindavan you all the brajavasis they they are afflicted in separation from you the the plants the leaves are drooping the flowers are losing their lustre the flu, fruits are losing their juice the animals are morose and motionless krishna everybody is afflicted please krishna come back swajan rajam yan nishodanam that all of us are afflicted and you krishna are the medicine that it is your presence your personal presence that is the medicine there is no other medicine that will work for us therefore krishna you please come back last verse it is concluding with a theme that krishna as you are wandering in the forest we are thinking how your lotus feet are pierced by the thorns yatte sujat charanam muram staneshu let krishna we we take the we consider your lotus feet so so worshipable so soft so tender that even when your lotus feet touch the softest part of our body sometimes we feel that this may be too sharp for your lotus feet and those lotus feet which we care for so much now they are in the forest and thinking that they are being ripped they are being cut by the sharp objects in the forest tena tavim atasi that we that they na kims with that we are afflicted we are distressed thinking that they are pierced and kurpa devir pramati krishna where are you wandering please dear bhavad ayushyamna our life is meant for serving you and oh hero oh sober person please come back so the you see here the first verse started with the theme of life जयतिधिकम जन्मना वृजा श्रयत इंदिरा शाश्वत हृदयत दुष्यता दीक्षुता अवकाश त्वयि धृता सवस तम चिन्वते ओ कृष्णा अवर लाइफ इज मेंट फॉर यू वी आर डेडिकेटेड टू यू एंड एंड विथ भवदायुष्याम 
that our life is meant for you. So they, each, with each prayer, the gopis are frantically begging Krishna, please come back. But they're also we we want you to come back, not for our sake, but for your sake. That we are concerned for you, Krishna. We want to serve you. Our life is meant for you. In fact, there is a beautiful prayer by uh, Radharani, which is Jatin Charita Amrut, where Radharani says, Krishna, when you left Vrindavan, life left our body. There is nothing left for us to live for. And we would have, we would have given up our bodies immediately. But when you left, you left, with, you left behind the words, I will come back. I will come back. And Radhani says that when you left, it's like I am like an animal who has been put in a cage, and then that cage is set on fire. So I'm burning with separation from you. And your words that I'll come back. When a, if an animal is in a cage on fire, the animal will try to bolt, run away from it. This is your words that you will come back. They are like the they are like the bolt just locked the cage we think that krishna if you come back and if we are no longer there to serve you you will feel distressed you will feel distressed if you come now this is radharani is talking about krishna when he has left for mathura and dwarka he's saying we i can't give up my body oh krishna because then if you come back and you see that I am not there to serve you, then that will that will make you unhappy. And I can't tolerate that. Therefore, I am still living. So the gopis are saying, since separation from Krishna, we can't live. Separation from you, Krishna, we can't live. The only reason we are living is because we live for you. Not to enjoy your association, but to serve you in your association. And please come back so that we can gently worship and serve you. Take your lotus feet and serve them in the best possible way, offering the fullest care to them. Oh Krishna, in this way, please come back. And the next chapter will describe how the gopis prayer is answered. The gopis, they are speaking and speaking and they finish. And it's almost as if they feel Krishna is not going to come. And they decide. And suddenly, it is not that Krishna Come, comes back, he just reappears in their midst. midst. And they're delighted. Now they offer Krishna, they take on their, their upper cloth and they make a seat for Krishna and they offer a seat to him. And then they speak to Krishna. And at that time, there's an elaborate conversation. But the conclusion of that conversation is that famous declaration by Krishna, Na para ye aham. Krishna says that O gopis, I cannot repay you. The service that you have done to me, I cannot repay you. You have offered your entire being to me. And I would like to reward you for this. But there is nothing I can give to you. So Krishna is, is a, at one level, Krishna might appear to be like a uncaring God. And the gopis gave up everything for Krishna and Krishna gives them up. But Krishna says that I do this so as to intensify your love for me. Because in separation from me, what, will hap what happened is your absorption in me increased. And when that absorption in me increased, that heightened your devotion for me. And I went away from you not because I rejected your love, but because I appreciated your love so much. And, I, and even when you had all reason to reject me, you didn't reject me. And therefore, you have won me over completely. Bhishma Pitama says in the Mahabharata that the test of love is that when there is every re reason to reject that love and still that love is not rejected. That is real love. That is pure devotion. So the gopis, they had every reason. Krishna, you betrayed us. You abandoned us after. We did so much for you. But the gopis don't say that. They keep begging for Krishna to come back. And that faithfulness of the gopis wins Krishna's heart. So Krishna, 
become separated from them to increase their love and to increase the world's appreciation for their love. And Krishna feels indebted and thus he declares, Naparayeham. And this experience of Krishna and then bereavement from Krishna, deprivation of Krishna. This theme, which is then the 10th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, is also in the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Where Narad Muni, while he is performing meditation, gets a glimpse of Krishna. And is, is, it says that every one of his senses is separately enlivened by the experience of Krishna. And then suddenly Krishna disappears. And then he is agitated. And he gets up. And he says, where is Krishna gone? He sits down and tries to meditate. But still he can't be on Krishna. He is trying everything that he can. But he can't see Krishna. And then the gopis, then, uh, sorry, then at that time he hears a disembodied voice which says, because you are not yet you are complete in service and pure in heart, because your service is incomplete and your heart is impure, the Lord says, I regret that you can't see me right now. I gave you this glimpse so that your desire for me will increase. And that desire will purge all other desires from your heart. And soon you will see me. So, there we see here, Krishna, with the gopis, is grateful that the gopis persevered through the separation. For, for Narada, who is just a boy, actually, Krishna, the Supreme Lord, he says, I regret that I can't, that you can't see me. So it's not that Krishna is deliberately depriving us of him. But Krishna wants us to become pure. And he does what is required for intensifying our love for him. So for us in our lives also, we may sometimes desire something for Krishna. We may be serving Krishna in a particular way. And sometimes the very thing that we are, we are using to serve Krishna, that seems to be taken away from us. And then you may think, oh, what is this? You know, the gopis were serving Krishna and Krishna went away from them. So we may be serving Krishna and for Shri Prabhupada it happened. Prabhupada, when he came to America, the only material possessions he had was a dictaphone and a typewriter. And both of them were stolen. And you know, what to do with that? Is it is Krishna is rejecting us? What is happening? So actually, Krishna is in when when certain things are taken away from us. Krishna is actually intensifying our desire for him. So, we may desire many things for Krishna in the world. You now, I have this, I have this, I have this, then I can serve you more, Krishna. But, sometimes, what the nature of the world is such that what is desired for Krishna becomes desired more than Krishna. That means we desire something for Krishna. Like we may, somebody may desire that I want to build a big temple for Krishna. And then they say, I, I'm raising these funds for building the temple. But then sometimes this raising those funds becomes such an obsession that then one gets completely distracted from Krishna. Then sometimes the very resource that we are using to serve Krishna, Krishna may take it away from us. So the purpose is not that Krishna is wanting us to go away from him. Krishna is not taking himself away from us. But rather, what might take us away from him, Krishna takes it away from us. So that we can move unimpeded towards him. Now at that time it may be very difficult to perceive that. In, uh, in one sense Narada, he had a high spiritual experience. And then he said, I have no experience. What is going on? But actually it was not it was a, it was a part of a plan of Krishna. So when we experience some deprivation in our lives, we may not feel separation from Krishna, but we may feel separation from something that we feel is very important for our service to Krishna. And that happens if you see that actually there is, Krishna is intensifying my desire for him. And if we try to use that situation to somehow stay connected with Krishna, somehow or the other stay connected, then we will find that actually our, our devotion for him will emerge stronger. And we will ultimately attain him. Just as Krishna answered the gopis prayers by reappearing before them and unite, and they were united, Similarly, if we persevere through the dark times in our life, we'll find that Krishna will appear. 
Prabhupada, when he translates, I'll conclude with this point. Prabhupada, when he translates the Gopi Gita in the Krishna book, Prabhupada concludes, very amazing, he says, in this way the gopis chanted Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Now, if you look at the Sanskrit of the Gopi Gita, we will not see any Hare Krishna mantra over there. So we say, what is Prabhupada doing? Now, how is Prabhupada putting, is he putting words in the gopis' mouths? Uh, not exactly. Now, Prabhupada was asked, when you give a summary study, what is the summary study? Prabhupada said, like Nectar of Division summary study. Or Krishna book is a summary study. So Prabhupada, what is the summary study? Prabhupada, the lighter way, said, summary study means I do whatever I want. <laughs> now what he meant by that was that Prabhupada, in a summary, what, what does Prabhupada want? He ultimately wants everyone to come to Krishna. So Prabhupada, what he does is, he gives us the the resources by which you can come to him. So we of course can recite the Gopi Gita. But for us the same mood of the Gopi Gita, Krishna please come. That is also the mood in which we, we call out Krishna's holy names. And thus Prabhupada is making these ex exalted spiritual emotions accessible to us by stressing the process. The Gopis may in some Kalpa, in some universe have enchanted the Hare Krishna Mantra. But even if some literalist says argues and he said, literally it's not there in the Bhagavatam. But the point is not just to get it right. The point is to get it across. That, you know, make the point clear so that people understand it. If somebody might speak, give a perfect class in Sanskrit, but if nobody in the audience understands Sanskrit, then what is the point of it? So Prabhupada is making these exalted emotions accessible for us. So when we experience deprivation in our lives, at that time, rather than feeling that it is, is Krishna neglecting me, rejecting me, rather than thinking this way, if you say that this is a, a, pro, a deprivation is an opportunity for intensification. When we see it in this way, just the gopis intensely pray to Krishna and we pray to Krishna intensely, then Krishna will remanifest in our life. This dark period will end and we will emerge closer to Krishna. So I'll summarize the second part. So, in the second part, we discuss from verses 8 onwards. Here, the gopis are more intimate personal reflections with of Krishna. They say, Krishna, you, oh Lord, your personal features, you have, you smiled at us, you glanced at us. And when we remember this, we, we, we are delighted as well as afflicted by this. Krishna, your pastimes are wonderful for the whole world. Uh, we, your, the sweet activity that you did with us, they are such that we can't, uh, we can't live without it. In your absence, your remembrance, uh, that in your absence, your remembrance doesn't mitigate because uh, we want your personal presence. So Krishna, please come back. Uh, when you go away, even for a few hours, we can't bear that separation from your Krishna. Please come back. Uh, although we are constantly afflicted from you, now we had the hope that we would be united with you. And now that you have gone away, it's unbearable, Krishna. Please come back. Uh, you, even if, Krishna, you give your the nectar of your lips to the flute, please give it to us. Krishna, your lotus feet fulfills all everyone's desires, so please fulfill our desire and come back. Krishna, your, your appearance is, is auspicious not just for us, but for all of Vrindavan, everybody is afflicted in separation from you, Krishna. Please come back. Krishna, we, our life is devoted to you. If you are not there, what is the point of our life? Please come back so that we can serve you. The gopis, prayer intensely offered to Krishna through the Gopi Gita has the desired result and Krishna does come back. And Krishna expresses his indebtedness to them. I cannot repay you because you should maintain your love for me in spite of I rejecting you. So that is that is how Krishna is a loving, appreciative, grateful God, even if he apparently seems to be rejecting or neglecting. And that same theme for us, which is in the culmination of the Bhagavatam in the tenth canto, it also applies for us the sadhakas as shown in the first canto. That when we uh, when we experience Krishna in some way and then we lose that experience. 
it's not deprivation but the deprivation can be seen as the impetus for intensification what is desired for krishna shouldn't be desired more than krishna if somehow hold on to krishna through the dark times then we will find that our connection with krishna will become stronger and krishna will become a greater sweeter brighter presence in our hearts and our lives thank you very much hare krishna shri krishna bhagwan ki shri gopi geet ki shri la prabhu pad ki aur bhakta vrind ki jai kai gaur premanande